realized something. Holy bouncing baby butts! I'm bored! Well, if I remember, if I can uh, fire my cognitive brain cells for a moment, I think I purchased quite a few books back in December that I forgot to read because I was too busy doing stuff. Yes, this is what I've been looking for. The Dirty Pear. <laughs> so recently I purchased the Dirty Pear Omnibus. Now, I like to say that you never forget your first, but the Dirty Pear really isn't my first. I have been to, into anime for a very long time. I uh, first discovered it at some point in the 70s, and by uh, the mid-80s I was going to comic conventions and uh, when going to the cons, uh, the thing I like to do is peruse uh, the dealer's room for bootleg VHS. And like your average uh, convention goer, I was happy if I was able to score a copy of, say, the Star Wars Christmas special, although if you've watched that, you'll regret it soon afterwards, or maybe a uh, pilot to some forgotten television show. But the real find, the total treasure, was if you could get your hands on some anime, because Back then, in the 80s, anime wasn't as uh, easy to find as it is now. And in 1987, I went to a con and I happened to get a copy of The Dirty Pair. It was a uh, one television episode uh, recorded off free air Japanese TV, uh, probably about fifth or sixth generation. But it was subtitled and I fell in love with the series. So I was quite ecstatic when... Uh, Studio Proteus, through Eclipse Comics, started bringing manga over to America, and one of those mangas just happened to be The Dirty Pair. Although, technically, it, they just licensed the characters that, uh, from the uh, Japanese anime and light novels, and the, it was actually an American comic. So it was sort of my first manga, and sort of not. Okay, we got the book. We got a chair to sit in. Now, let's get started. I feel as though I have already read this. Is this deja vu? No, oh, wait. I think I know what it is. Now, uh, now, where is it? I know I've got it somewhere. Aha! Uh, uh -huh. Remember when I said the dirty pair originated as novels? Well... I just happen to have one of them. The Dirty Pair was created by veteran science fiction writer Haruka Takachio. Legend has it that the inspiration for The Dirty Pair occurred when he, two staffers named Kay and Yuri, and a fellow writer named Bertrand Chandler were attending a Japanese pro wrestling show. The show happened to be part of the World's Women's Wrestling Association, and the main event featured the uh, tag team of The Beauty Pair. Supposedly, at some point during the match, Chandler uh, leaned over to Takachio and said, Well, if the two in the ring are the beauty pair, then the two over here must be the dirty pair. Now, Takachio wrote several of these books, and they were actually translated into English to help Japanese businessmen learn English, and that's actually how I got my hands on a couple of them. The series takes place in the year 2138 and follows the exploits of two trouble consultants named Kay and Yuri who work for the World Welfare Works Association. Trouble consultants are sort of like a cross between FBI agents and negotiators. And uh, this particular book uh, is uh, called A Great Adventure with a Dirty Pair, 
quite an original title. It must have taken quite some time to think that one up. But it's also the first story in this manga collection, so let's compare and contrast it. It is actually a pretty faithful adaptation. Most of the changes are subtle. Like in the book, most of the ships are flying saucers and rockets, giving it more of a 50s retro sci-fi feel, while the manga has more of the or modern, dirty space aura about it. The biggest changes are in the beginning and towards the end. The book starts off with the dirty pair in orbit around the planet Dangle. The manga takes a cue from the various anime and shows the pair wrapping up a previous assignment. You see, their official code name is the Lovely Angels, but due to the destruction that seems to follow them, most people know them as the Dirty Pair. And the manga's opener is no different as they accidentally flood an entire planet. What follows is the chief of the 3WA writhing in anger about all the complaints that he is receiving, but he still gives our girls their next assignment. And that assignment is to investigate the destruction of one of Gravis Heavy Industries' labs on the planet Dangle. From here on in, the book and the manga are pretty similar. The book is written in first person, and you experience everything through Kay's eyes. This is where much of the world-building and exposition is. You also find out before going to the planet Dango that the angels were on vacation. In the book, it explains that the only reason they were offered the case happened to be because they were the closest trouble consultants to the planet. And they could have turned it down, but as their vacay was a bust, the girls decided to take the job and earn some cash. One of the things I was pleased that this manga has is that, like in the book, it mentions that Kay and Yuri have low-level psychic abilities. For the most part, this gives them vague visions that help them solve their cases. In the book, it is highly implied that this is the main reason they have a job in the 3WA. And their psychic abilities is something that's not really mentioned in any other version of the Dirty Pair, except for the book and this manga. The other major difference is towards the end. In the book, they enter a space station knowing it is a trap, and they have a gunfight. In the manga, the girls also know that it is a trap, but they choose to crash their spaceship into the station and then have a gunfight. The other major difference comes slightly later. The dirty pair are captured, and they're restrained, and Dr. Tapeus is going to kill him anyway, so he does that you know villain thing where he goes, I'm going to tell you my big secret plan. Like, uh... Supervillains so often do. In both versions, he is going to release a neurotoxin that will cause those exposed to it to become mindless slaves. In the book, Tapeus is part of a criminal organization known as Lucifer. This actually will come up in a later manga story, but in this particular chapter, he doesn't seem to be working for anyone. In the books, the girls escape and have a big fight and capture Tapeus. In the manga, Tapeus is going to give them a pure dose of the toxin, and it appears that Yuri is infected before the girls have a chance to break out of their bondage. This is actually an improvement over the book because it adds an extra layer of suspense and a good false finish. When they corner Tapeus and the bad doctor mentions that since Yuri is under the influence and that she will obey any command given to her, he tells Yuri to kill Kay. Well, luckily, 3WA trouble consultants are inoculated against all kinds of toxins and Yuri snaps out of it at the last minute. The other big change between the book and the manga is the book ends with an epilogue that finds the girls drowning their sorrows after getting chewed out by the boss and causing, by accident, in a huge bar fight that causes the bar to burn to the ground. All in all, not a bad adaptation. It, you know, it covers all the major plot points, and I feel most of the changes either don't hurt the story or, in the case of Yuri getting infected, actually help the story. Probably my biggest gripe in this particular uh, manga is I'm not a big fan of the reinterpretation of Kay and Yuri's outfits. Now, I know it's true that each and every time the Dirty Pair have appeared, uh, their uh, uniforms have changed, sometimes subtly and sometimes drastically. But this particular uh, version, I'm just not feeling. I think the artwork is generally fine. I think the artist does a great job of... Uh, doing the action sequences. I think the girls look really good. I'm just not a fan of uh, the uniforms in this particular version. Ironically, when I was making this video, I discovered this is actually not the first adaptation of uh, this particular story. There actually is a fan film that was made in 1982 by a bunch of uh, 
high school students as part of their anime club. And there's only about 17 minutes of it online. Apparently the movie is about an hour and 40 minutes. But uh, just viewing that, uh, first off, it considering that this is not done by professional animation studio, and this is all hand-drawn uh, animation cells, this is incredible. And it also is really faithful to the book, uh, even down to the, uh, the bar fight at the end. So, um, as I said, um, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. So, if you like The Dirty Pair, if you've enjoyed reading this uh, book, uh, or you just enjoyed my uh, review of it, I really suggest you should check out the link at the bottom of uh, the description. And also, share this video, like this video, and subscribe to my channel.